There may be some spiders around here that are very dangerous. Dad, chill out. Just run. Oh! They spread out from a central nest in a web-like pattern and dominate the entire area. <laughs> so when that happens, this town is dead. Better be caught by private stock. <laughs> Rock and roll! <laughs> Hollywood Pictures and Amblin Entertainment present... Arachnophobia, eight legs, two fangs, and an attitude. Welcome back to the 12th annual Halloween special. Tonight we're talking about a film that, to be honest, I've wanted to review for a few years. But if I'm being real, I've been a little scared to rewatch because I'm a bit like Jeff Daniels' character in this film. I'm not really a big fan of anything that's creepy crawly, especially spiders, which is why arachnophobia has always bothered me. But while re-watching this movie tonight, I actually learned something about myself that I'll talk about later. This film was directed by veteran producer Frank Marshall and produced by Steven Spielberg and Kathleen Kennedy for Amblin Entertainment. And it's about a new species of South American killer spider that hitches a lift to a California town in a coffin and starts to breed, leaving a trail of deaths that puzzle and terrify young Dr. Ross Jennings, who is newly arrived in town with his family and also horrified of spiders. So I don't mean to exaggerate. I'll watch a movie about spiders. I did a video for Eight-Legged Freaks a few years ago. This year I did a video for Sting. And I watched Infested this year, which is a fantastic French film that is worse than arachnophobia if you don't like spiders. It's it's extremely disturbing and horrible and, and I really enjoyed it. It was a good movie and I never want to look at it again. But just like I don't really like, say, hmm, serial killers, I can watch movies about them. <laughs> so I'm not a huge fan of spiders, but I can watch a film that's about fear of spiders. It's just that it does affect me more than others. Like at the end of the movie, my palms, I had little crease marks in them from my fingernails because I was gripping my fists like this while watching it. And it's just something that's been this way since I was a kid. I don't know why, but I have always had a fear of spiders, and I used to say I had arachnophobia, but this movie made me realize something about myself because there's a scene where Jeff Daniels picks up a cricket and he has it in his hand and he's relieved that it's not a spider. And I thought to myself, I wouldn't do that shit. So I think it's really just all bugs. Mmm, mmm. Mmm. See? Okay. So I just looked up the term to make sure I said it right, and fucking Google still showed a picture. <laughs> God damn it, how do you pronounce... Entomophobia. That! That! I have that! This movie opens with a photographer in South America who's taking pictures of rare species of butterflies and spiders and all kinds of things. And he really likes football a lot, and that is made very clear when he actually picks up his hat that is covered in all of that and it's just not something I would ever do. I, that hat would be gone. That hat has become theirs. Take it away. I never want it again. <laughs> Amongst many things, what's impressive about this movie is that it has a 17 minute prologue and I was never bored. I wasn't like, hey, where's the, you know, where's the movie? Like, where's the plot? It, it was very investing and the helicopter shots are really beautiful. You have to wonder if Spielberg saw some of the stuff that Frank Marshall was doing on this movie and a couple years later thought, that would be a cool way to open Jurassic Park. I must have said the word no like a dozen times during this movie and not just N-O but like N with like 10 O's just just really long drawn out uncomfortable. It's a fun thrilling movie especially if you have arachnophobia. But what's interesting about the movie is that it's not just about the spiders and, and what that element would give to an audience that wants to go on a bit of a thrill ride. This is actually a very good story because Jeff Daniels as a doctor has moved his family to this small town with the promise of inheriting a doctor's patients who's retiring and when this old guy decides you know what I'm actually gonna stick around for a while he's forced to figure out how his family is going to succeed how they're going to make money when he only has one patient a sweet old lady in town who takes pity on him this battle against the 
big city doctor who has progressive views and who believes in science and medicine against this small town doctor who believes that some aspirin and a good night's rest will take care of any problem makes arachnophobia more than a B movie. It's a film. You have characters that are dealing with real life struggles that you can comprehend and understand and relate to. And Jeff Daniels is the type of actor who's immediately likable. And this is four years before Dumb and Dumber. It's four years before Speed. And he's so good in the movie because you understand exactly where he's coming from. On his character's arachnophobia, there's a really brilliant scene where he's examining three dead bodies. He believes these people have been killed by a spider and he's concerned about the town's safety. A spider expert comes into the room who has touched and been around every creepy crawly you could ever imagine. So you think this guy's pretty brave, right? But the second he sees these dead human bodies, he can barely stand being in the room while Jeff Daniels is a rock. It's scenes like that that make arachnophobia stand out amongst the pack because you're exploring human nature. What terrifies one person is a normal day at work for someone else. And when it needs to be scary, it is. I mean, the psycho shower scene is great and all, but oh my fucking God. What's also extremely apparent rewatching the movie all these years later is that the spider action has aged incredibly well because they're using a phenomenal combination of real spiders and animatronic spiders. There's only one shot in the movie that hasn't aged well. It's a wide shot of the house with John Goodman approaching it. They probably had to digitally add these spiders later. But this is a 34-year-old movie at this point. You can look at movies from like 2012 and see some of the CGI looking a little bit eh, nowadays. The fact that this movie came out at that time and still holds up as well as it does is very impressive. Now there's a part near the end of this movie that turned me into Macaulay Culkin from Home Alone. I mean, I had my palms firmly planted against my cheeks and I was basically screaming. And I'm not gonna put it in the video because that means that I have to look at it again. I have to edit it into this video and see it again, then rewatch it to make sure the sound's good and I'm just not gonna do it, but it's a spider's butt popping. <laughs> it's, whoo boy. Arachnophobia clearly did its job on me. It's a movie I've always enjoyed. I've seen it maybe twice in my life, once as a kid on TV, and I was like, I'm good, um, and all these years later. And I still really enjoy the movie. It's just really well done for exactly what it's trying to do. Like, if you want to like look at the movie as that, like, what is this film trying to do? Look at its title, look at its characters, look at the effects. It does it all very well. It did its job. Guys, thank you so much, as always, for continuing to watch the 12th annual Halloween special. Look forward to more videos very soon. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.